Hello and welcome to Different Leaf, a show for new and experienced cannabis consumers. I'm Britt Smith. This episode, we're revisiting our interview with cannabis journalist Jackie Bryant to talk about the science of edible cannabis and how it works in our bodies. Jackie wrote about this for Different Leaf magazine back in fall 2021, but she's not just one of our fabulous writers. She's also the managing editor of San Diego magazine, and you may have read her latest article in the New York Times about the growing trend of Thanksgiving, getting high on Thanksgiving with family and friends. Today, Jackie's going to be chatting with us about her research on what happens inside us when we ingest cannabis edibles. We're talking about the chemical process behind how digested cannabis works in our bodies, giving us a more physical high than inhaling weed. We also discuss why edibles impact different people in different ways and whether strains actually make a difference. We're also going to cover microdosing, the science of fast-acting edibles, the ups and downs of public cannabis drink consumption, and where Jackie sees edibles going in the future. If you're traveling for the holidays this year, there are definitely some other really great episodes in our back catalog that you'll want to listen to on your road trip. If, like me, being more active is on your to-do list for the upcoming new year, you might like Step Up Your Runner's High with Josiah Hesse from January 2022, which is an episode all about his experience using edibles to help him train and zone in during marathon runs. And if that sounds good, you might want to check out How CBD Helps Athletes with founder of Mendy and famed soccer star twin Rachel Rapineau from November 2021. And it's also snuggling season, so why not listen to Dope Sex with Ashley Manta from January 2021, where you can literally hear me trying my best not to blush throughout the entire episode. There are plenty of other really top-notch episodes of Different Leaf for you to enjoy over the holiday season, so be sure to give our back catalogue a scroll through, and if you like it, tell a friend or two, maybe even give us a rating and a nice little review. It's free, and only the coolest people do it. We'll be back after this quick break to talk about the science of edibles with Jackie Bryant. So in the latest issue of Different Leaf the magazine. You have done some amazing writing for us on the science of edibles. And I have a million questions, but I apparently have to fit it into a short podcast. So here we go. I want to know what you learned from writing this article. Can you tell us a little bit about how edibles work inside our bodies? Oh, it's such a good question. Actually, edibles are kind of my favorite topic these days because not long ago, they were the wild, wild west of cannabis consumption, right? Like you weren't really taking edibles unless you were probably a regular consumer, a heavy consumer. You knew someone who could bake or wanted to. It definitely is a steep learning curve to learn even how to make edibles personally. Forget about buying them, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, everyone's got, I feel like that story of you know, the random brownie that they happened upon or the cookie they took at a party nonchalantly that ended up setting them on a real one for the next 24 hours or so. So historically and in, in, in old stoner lore, edibles were kind of the wild, wild west. You never really knew 100% what you were going to get and you had to be down for the ride. Like there was right. a personality type that that <laughs> kind of went down that trip, right? But now it's a totally different story with legalization and better dosing and better technology. You can really dial that in. It's very predictable. You can titrate and dose appropriately. It's It's a whole other world, honestly. And that's really fascinating to me because it has changed consumption habits almost overnight in the cannabis space, whereas people who aren't comfortable smoking or who don't want to smoke for health or whatever other reasons, or um, who maybe just don't like the high that they get from it, now they can try edibles and they don't have to worry about like getting, you know, totally turned upside down on them, which is really cool. So Unpacking the science of it and also the consumption habits around it are super interesting to me because there's so much that we can learn about Mm -hmm. this and it's directly tied to legalization. None of this would have happened without um, better testing and better technology. And that's kind of, I guess, what leads me into the science of it is that, you know, even just two years ago, the majority of edibles and drinkables on the market were just made with THC distillate. Mm -hmm. And kind of like low quality oil that you get from all of the trim and everything else that nobody wants to use and they turn it into an oil. And 
God, since then, you know, like old drinks, for example, which I consider drinks in the same realm as edibles. It's the same right. technology and, and absorption at the end of the day. So I'll use those interchangeably. But like drinks two years ago, you used to like have these drinks with this oily layer in it. And they were not, they were disgusting. They were absolutely they were horrific. Gross. Yeah. So gross. And now you have this nano emulsion technology where they've shrunk the THC molecules so that they are more soluble and bioavailable and they go into your bloodstream faster and they can bypass the liver. And it's just like, it's a totally different chemical reaction that results in a totally different effect. So I learned that there's still so much more to learn, basically. It sounds like it. It sounds like there's a lot that we've figured out in just the last few years. And so the coming years really excite me. We've been able to figure out over the last few years how to, like you said, really dial in those kinds of highs, the kinds of highs that we want to feel. Do we want to feel happy and euphoric or do we want to feel mellow and, and sleepy? You know, there's all these different kinds of edibles that you can take now. Back up. I have some commentary on that, by the way. Oh, oh, please go ahead. Well, so something that I learned and a lot of people don't like me to say, including edibles makers, is that it actually doesn't matter what strain you use. Oh, this is good to know. So mm -hmm. there's there's no difference between the sativa and indica mm -hmm. edibles? Nope. It's a total what? lie. Yes, it's a total lie. It's a total marketing lie. This is like my big crusade right now. <laughs> I know. Wait a I minute. Know. It's true. And okay, there are some people, obviously, and some like hardcore activists who swear to Christ that it does matter, but it actually doesn't because in your body, when you take edibles... THC in your liver, it, it turns into another chemical compound called 11-hydroxy-THC. The terpenes, et cetera, flavonoids, um, they don't come with it. So in that chemical conversion, pretty much everything that's unique about individual plants and, and, and cultivars and what have you is lost. It, wow. it's, it, it just goes away. So it actually doesn't matter. The only thing that really gets through, and this is a very distilled, for lack of a better term, version of all of the science, but basically just the cannabinoids and all of that remain. So, you know, if it's something that's CBD dominant or CBM, that that's going to come through or, or, or THC, but it does not matter whether it came from, you know, a chem dog or um, mm. an OG Kush or whatever. And so that is just a total marketing lie. <laughs> and oh my gosh, you just blew my mind. What? Yeah. And it's a gorgeous I, lie. It's a lot of mental... It's 100% mental. It's totally um, psychosomatic. It's placebo mm. effect. They know that. They know that nobody knows this. Because of course, like just what we know in the greater consciousness and those of us who like don't spend all day thinking about weed, which is most people, mm -hmm. um, they just know maybe, maybe they know indica sativa, which that's a whole other question. And, and that binary is, it's kind of a lie too. Yeah. Again, that's another question for another right. time. Another topic. But they know that people just associate one thing with the other. And so that's just like an easy marketing layup, right? Like if you know Indica Indica Couch, then you market that for sleep or relaxation. The thing is, is that a lot of people making these products and a lot of the corporate cannabis types, they honestly don't know anything about weed either. And truthfully, if you mm -hmm. presented them with this, as I have many times, they just kind of sit there and they're like, oh, well, I don't, I don't really, like a lot of people just don't even know it. Like they, they haven't questioned mm -hmm. it and, and therefore they don't know it, which I don't really blame them for. But I mean, like if you're making edibles, maybe you should. You should know that. Yeah. You should know so, that. Or they do and they're intentionally lying. Either way, it doesn't matter. Long story short. But how, how is it that we all feel sort of different things? Some of us don't feel anything. I feel very little from edibles at all. And then there are some people that have just a few milligrams and they'll have a really bad trip. Why is it so different in all of our bodies? Well, it's the same reason why smoking also feels different from us. Intoxicating substances have different effects on different people. Now, the longer answer is because of that different chemical process that happens in the body when you eat edibles. So you're not getting, you know, delta-9 THC. You're getting 11-hydroxy-THC, which is a completely different compound. It metabolizes in the liver, not in your bloodstream. And it, it's just it's just different. Like that's basically the, the, the best way to describe it is it's just a completely different, um, intoxicating physiological chemical process. And so it's going to affect different people in different ways. And I know tons of people like you who like just straight up don't get high off edibles. Like yeah. it just doesn't work for them. Very frustrating. 
I can imagine that kind of sounds like it would suck. But the other thing is that like tolerance to THC in any of its forms builds very quickly in the body. So that could be part of it too. But um, yeah, edibles just don't, they just don't work. And, and there may be a bigger reason for that, but it is entirely individual. That's the thing. But also, you know, there's no way to predict how you will act on edibles or feel on edibles based off of your experience smoking or vaping. They don't correlate. So I smoke a lot. Should I stop? And will that help me feel the edibles? I'm talking like a lot. <laughs> I believe that smoking a lot can maybe affect your tolerance um, with edibles would, from the I outset. I would imagine, yeah. It should, it could, but honestly, it, it's not really the biggest determinant. Like you could be the heaviest smoker in the world and never take edibles and pop a fiver and it could just totally send you to the moon or it could not do anything. It's just a different, consider it a different substance at that point, honestly. You're right. In your article, you even said, go low and go slow. And I've heard this from so, so many people, dispensary folk, medical folk. They say that when you're starting off with edibles, the idea is to start at like a couple of milligrams. And then if that doesn't work for you or feel good enough for you, then you just sort of build yourself up. What is it now that we have, uh, we've got this new technology that, that allows for faster release how in the world would I dose myself low and go slow if my edible is going fast? Actually, that's a really good question. Uh, that's a beautiful layup because it helps you do that better. So part of the mystery of drugs and the mystery of a, a so-called bad trip is that it's really all rooted in fear and anxiety, right? Like a lot of that happens because we don't know what's happening to our body. We don't know when it's going to happen and we don't know what's coming after that and how we'll make it out. So mm -hmm. this is these are all question marks. And actually the new technology or faster hitting edibles, it's called nano emulsion technology. That actually helps us with that because it says, hey, you're supposed to feel something in 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah. That's great. That is so much better than the other edibles that are like, you know, wait two hours. Like, oh my God, you can talk yourself into a real dark place in two hours. You and you can I forget mean? you took it. I have so many yes. friends that are like, oh my God, it just hit. I completely forgot I took a cookie an hour ago. Or you're like, it's not working and you get impatient and then you take more. That is totally yeah. a thing that happens to people. I've definitely been a victim of that. Um, myself. So actually the nano emulsion technology sets you up better for that. You know that you're supposed to feel something in 15 to 30 minutes. Um, and if you've taken edibles before, you'll recognize what that feeling is. But just the fact that you know when it's coming and in some vague terms, what to expect, that's a beautiful thing. And that alleviates so many questions and so much anxiety. So mm -hmm. that, and then on the back end, because it is more bioavailable and it um, hits faster, it also goes away faster. So the mm -hmm. thought behind these this technology is to make it basically just more predictable so that people can manage their dosing better and find something that's more comfortable for them. And the quicker onset allows for that. It just takes away so many of those unknown variables. So you can know if you don't feel something in 30 minutes, you might be okay to take another. But if you've yeah. taken too much, the beauty of it is that it's going to be gone soon. And, and, you know, the thought is to kind of mimic the onset of alcohol maybe to be like an alcohol replacement. Like if you are taking a drug alongside alcohol that comes on, you know, in the same strength or at the same level of quickness that it'll, it'll mimic that feeling and become more of a replacement for people. And that's something that, that people are really used to. Like I can take a, a shot or have a glass of wine and I expect to feel it within the hour and know sort of my limit. So do you see a lot of that nano emulsion technology in cannabis beverages? Yes. So Vertosa is one of the companies that is employing this technology. There are several, but they're probably the biggest one. Um, they do the emulsion for can, for example, um, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the biggest drinks makers in the space. And I know that they have a presence on the East Coast too. I'm in San Diego. So yeah, drinks especially, and also edibles. So, so little gummies and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a big thing in drinks because they're really betting hard that people are, are going to want to sub one for the other. And I have right. some lingering doubt about that very personally do you i i thought that it might be an easier cultural transition what do you think i think it is but i don't know just like i have a piece coming out today about it actually so i love cannabis beverages i like them i eat edibles all the time i can handle them i think they're great i can be social on them but at the same time mm -hmm. like drinking a cannabis drink isn't the same as drinking a beer the buzz just isn't the same and it is for me personally, and I think for a lot of other people, it's a lot less social. You know, like if I am taking an edible, I can be social, but I also like, I smoke a lot of weed. Like I know how to 
be mm. high in public, basically. <laughs> but a lot of people yeah. don't, you know, and they're not really comfortable with that. And I don't blame them. Like the high you get from weed can be a really solitary in your head and in your body thing. It's just not the same as being drunk. Being drunk is one is a little more social than the other. And like history bears that out, right? Yeah, um, yeah, you okay, know, the yeah. archetype of the stoner sitting on the couch eating food and, you know, the, the drunk people at a bar screaming and dancing. Uh, there's some reality there. Yeah. So I personally wonder whether long term people are really going to sub out one for the other. But I do know friends who struggle with alcoholism who say, actually, it's been a godsend for them and it has allowed them to be social in public. So again, it totally dependent on your experiences, but I did have one cannabis beverage with the nano emulsion that also has caffeine in it naturally mm. from mate. Uh -oh. That changed my whole life. Is that the new coffee? For me? I, I mean, so. for, for you, is it the new morning coffee? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's low caffeine because it's just from mate. It's not, you know, coffee jitters. It's totally chill. It's five milligrams. I'm like, oh my God, this is the perfect combination. It's what you can bake in a can. Like, but it's not, it doesn't screw you up too much. So I'm like, I just wrote this piece waxing poetic on it. So I'm, I'm nice. all about that right now. <laughs> Do you have a lot of products out there that are edibles that are healthy options? Because that's what I've heard a lot of people, they haven't been able to get their hands on. Everyone can just get brownies, cookies, gummies, but they don't seem to be able to get like, I don't know what they want, infused granola, you know, healthier things. Yes. Oh, yes. Anything that you can put in your mouth or your butt, they have <laughs> weed in out here in California. <laughs> and I have tried it all. <laughs> California is fun. Oh, my God. No, it's insane. It's like, I was joking with a friend yesterday at a barbecue. I was just like, dude, three years ago, like none of this stuff even existed. Like, and we just yeah. talk about it now. Like what milligram is that? Like, it's just, it's just very funny to me, but um, yeah, we do have like healthier options. I know Papa and Barkley recently came out with gummies. They're a brand that I really like very high quality. They just came out with gummies that are um, solventless and sugarless, which is huge. Um, mm. That's because everything is just loaded with sugar, but yeah. And you know, there are tinctures that we have. Oh, do you guys have the sublingual strips out there? I That's think different because so. they're not edibles because they, they act like tinctures, but the sublingual yeah. strips are pretty awesome. And that is a totally zero cal way of getting the, well, it's again, it's different because it, it, it goes right into the bloodstream through your mouth. Right. So it's different tinctures versus edibles, right? Because edibles are being processed in your liver and the tinctures go through the bloodstream in your gums. Correct. So technically right. it's different. If you don't have a great experience on tinctures, that shouldn't necessarily correlate to edible use in any way. So friendly tip for everybody. They're, they're actually not the same, even though they both go in your mouth. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, we have, we're getting towards healthier options. It's definitely a big part of the conversation here. Like people are just like, I can't be eating these super sugary things as much anymore. Yeah. So I think we'll continue to see that change. I had, I had shrimp chips the other day. Um, cannabis infused shrimp chips. Who came up with that? Potley is the brand. Um, and they make olive oil as well, which is really cool. They also have, um, there's this company that has a, a Sichuan chili crisp that's infused, which oh is really gosh. cool. Oh yeah. You name it. You can put weed in it. <laughs> you can infuse that baby. Do you think that folks, since we've been at home in the pandemic more, they're starting to do more sort of at home cooking with weed? You know, probably, honestly, I thought I would be one of those people and I'm not, it turns mm -hmm. out, which is kind of surprising. You know, for me, the problem with cooking with cannabis is that like, I just, I love food a lot. And if something's really delicious, I'm going to want to eat a lot of it. And, <laughs> and so like, I just get hung up on like the dosing versus, and you know, I, I, I had an edible gummy the other day that was like, or, or chocolate, it was a chocolate truffle. And I was like, I want 10 of these, but I can't have yeah. 10 of them. <laughs> so I think I've people are getting more curious about it. And I know that a number of cannabis cookbooks have come out in the last couple of years specifically. And so I would imagine that more people are just screwing around with it and trying it at home. But um, mm -hmm. you would have to really want to do it. It, it's a big undertaking. So I, I do think that I'm sure some people have ventured into it when they wouldn't have had the time before, but I haven't really seen like this explosion in the way that I did wonder that at the beginning. And I haven't really noticed like a huge explosion in it. 
I thought that I'd see a lot more interest in people wanting to do like infused dinners um, themselves mm -hmm. and just, I don't know, I thought people would get more interested in it. But I think what they got more interested in is trying different products that are already made for them at home while they're sitting at home in the pandemic being exactly. bored. I don't think you want to like brew your own beer, you know, you want to just go out and buy a six pack. But for for stoners, for cannabis folk, instead of wanting to cook your own stuff, I think, which is very difficult, it seems like a whole process you know I'm, I'm just down to try new products I really really wish that edibles worked for me I've tried up to like a hundred milligrams in a day and I and haven't nothing. felt a thing nothing I have tried a lot of infused things I've tried like infused you know the regular gummies and and brownies and whatever but also infused goldfish crackers infused tea uh, I think the weirdest one might have been like like infused cereal in yeah, I do smoke daily, so you're probably right that there's some sort of issues with my tolerance there. But I do too, and I and edibles definitely hit me, so it might just be your body. Maybe it's a genetic thing and I'll never get over it, but I'm hoping that the good science gods will give me something in the future to get me high edible style. What do you think the future of cannabis edibles looks like? What, what have you seen in the making right now? Oh, that's a really good question. I do think this kind of glut of infusing everything is probably going to level off. Because um, mm -hmm. again, like if I buy a bag of shrimp chips, I want to eat all the shrimp chips. I don't mm -hmm. want just one or two. <laughs> so I do feel like there is a ceiling for infusing everything. And maybe we're just being a little excited about the novelty of it. I think yeah. drinkables are definitely here to stay. Um, I think gummies, again, gummies kind of, someone um, for, was it Eater or Vox, um, one of those properties did a really lovely piece recently about um, the rise of gummies and how, you know, basically everybody feels safe taking a gummy because, you know, us like older millennials and Gen Xers, like that was like how you got your nutrients when you were little, right? Like your little Flintstones gummy with vitamins in it. And so gummies are, are kind of like, oh, this is like sort of medicinal, but it's fun. And so I think that that's <laughs> just like an ingestion method that's always going to be here to stay. And they're going to be huge. Like I just know so many people anecdotally who, you know, I'm 35 and they're like, I don't really want to smoke anymore. It's not really that healthy. It doesn't make me feel good. It makes me feel yep. anxious. Um, and so they, you know, I know a lot of people who just don't smoke, never really smoked, but they are regularly taking edibles now. So I just think it's going to turn into this whole other beast of a cannabis category where it's, you know, part of cannabis, but also separate. I think also um, a piece that we haven't quite touched on yet is the medical side of this. A lot of people yes. prefer edibles because they have physical pain or nausea and edibles really take care of those issues. It's like a lot more of a body high. But if you smoke, I find at least it's more of a head high. Mm -hmm. So there's just a huge area of the marketplace that, that really wants to keep buying edibles because of their medical potential. Yeah. And legalization has kind of fucked them. And am I allowed to say that? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, and I feel really badly for medical patients, especially in California, which is obviously the market I know the best, because now there are legal limits on edibles and how many can, you know, the, the t not only the THC level, but how much you can have, you know, per piece, but what you can have in one package as well. It has to be a hundred mm. milligrams. And like, ask a cancer patient who's taking edibles for cancer pain and 100 milligrams isn't going to do anything. Like I mentioned before, THC or any cannabinoids build up tolerance really quickly in your body. And so why cancer patients need such high doses at one time is because, again, like their body has just built up that tolerance and that's what they need to, to feel better. And so it becomes very expensive very quickly to have to buy packages in, you know, 100 milligram increments, whereas before they could just buy a thousand off the, you know, at that point you're at scale yeah. and everything is so much cheaper. So legalization has really limited access for medical patients for edibles. And it is probably one, in my mind, one of the biggest ignored and like biggest crimes of legalization. I feel badly for them. Yeah, <laughs> and I know that they're very loud. Medical patients are loud and angry about it. And it's, I don't know how it's going to change, unfortunately. We'll have to keep tracking it. And um, hopefully in some of your upcoming reporting, we'll see how it changes. You can read more about Jackie's reporting on the science of edibles in our current Different Leaf issue. So Jackie, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And hopefully we'll we'll get to catch up soon and maybe have some edibles together. That sounds good to me. Thank you so much. <laughs>
A big thanks to our guest, cannabis journalist Jackie Bryant. You can read Jackie's writing in several different issues of Different Leaf the magazine, including the most recent Edibles issue, where she gives us a delicious strain review of the 2022 Emerald Cup Indoor Champion Flower on page 25. That issue of the magazine and all previous issues are available at differentleaf.com under the subscribe and shop tab. That's differentleaf.com. Next week, we'll be chatting with Otha Smith, CEO of Tetragram, a new app designed especially to help medical cannabis patients navigate their medicine. And she just said, you know, we could have spent hundreds of that thousands of dollars trying to really dial it in to find out what product worked best. But using your app made it easy for us to reflect back on products that he used, the experience he had with them, in order to hit that sweet spot a lot sooner. Be sure to like and subscribe to the show wherever you're listening right now and follow us on social media at Different Leaf and at Different underscore Leaf. And you can find me on social media at Brit the British. Check out differentleaf.com for all the issues of our beautiful magazine and go to xdifferentleaf.com to get signed up for our insanely cool new merch line. That's differentleaf.com and xdifferentleaf.com.